So besides academic achievements, what other focuses should we make on the development of a child? Mm -hmm. So there may be quite a few because let's say a parent or parents are financially not able to provide for the child. That could be the number one setback. Let's say you're not able to provide the uniforms and the school books and whatever is needed for the child to be comfortable to go to school. Sometimes you may need a transport to go to school, but financially you're not able. Then you will have to stop the child from going to school. The child cannot go to school. The first thing is understanding that financially, financial stability is important to provide the physical, let's call it that way, physical things for child, the child is needed to go to school. Because if they don't have it, that also disturbs their mind. Because let's say they go to school and they do not have proper shoes or their shoes is different color, then that also, that is in the mind of that child that I am supposed to wear white shoes in school, but I'm wearing this color shoes because this is what my parents would, uh, have, uh, could afford. So that begins to disturb this child's mind. I should have these color shoes. Or this should be the uniform that I don't have. And these little, little things get into the mind of the child. And it causes some kind of disturbance inside. Secondly, if the peers, which means the children, the child's uh, friends, those who are in his same level, starts taunting him and telling him, well, why you don't have one the correct shoes? <laughs> These things also disturb that child's mind. These friends are telling me that I should not have these shoes. I need this color of shoes to come to school. And so can you imagine what is happening in the mind of that child? That child, yes, is disturbed. And any mind that is disturbed cannot function properly. Once your mind is disturbed, once there is distress, once there is tension, once there is any kind of disturbance, you cannot think properly. And so from that point, that child, the development of that child starts falling back, which means that child cannot think the way he would love to or the way he have to think. And because he's not able to think right, it damages his intellectual ability. So you would realize that these type of children always fall back in the class. You are not able to produce or move forward unless that child has a strong mind and says, even if my shoes is not like this or I do not have the right shoes, that should not disturb his mindset. But because children, of course, are not so emotionally strong, they quickly get influenced. A parent duty in that, in that situation is to tell the child, okay, at this time, I am not able to financially provide for you, but do not make this hmm, a block, which means do not make it such a big problem that you do not study your work. Hmm? But on the contrary, you should study even more hard to provide for yourself. What your parents could not provide for you, you should work hard and provide also. So we have to instill or we have to give power. Try to emotionally empower the child in such a way that he himself could learn to go beyond his limitations. I'm not sure if you're understanding. So yes. So in order for a parent to also empower hmm, an emotionally weak child, they themselves need that kind of understanding 
to know that okay my child is going through this in school with his with his uh, friends let me talk to him let me help him but what happens quickly is that okay if someone hit your child in school for example then you are ready to hit that one's that child also i've seen it happen here in this country hmm? or the parents begin to fight also hmm? but that is not the solution the solution is that every parent responsibility is to educate and empower their own child do not look at someone else's child another thing is that parents tend to um to compare children you are not doing well telling their own child that they are not doing well they're looking at the neighbor child that is performing very well look at you you're not able to do well you are this you are dull head or you are stone headed and look at mr x child doing so well situations are different mr x situation might be different and your situation might be different so why compare mr x child to your child your child may be have an ability that mr x child don't have and so whatever is the ability of your child you empower that which means if mr x child want to study to be a doctor or a lawyer and your child want to study to be a a technician or what you call this build a house builder then you empower that ability in that child whatever skill whatever talent whatever capacity he have that is what you need to empower your child may be different every child is different but whatever the difference is you empower that quality in that child so it is many times parents do not pay let us call it particular attention to their child and their emotional needs um it is a topic that very few people are able to understand now let's say in a divorced relationship and a child is with one parent that child will be going through his own emotional let's call it um imbalances emotional imbalances means that sometimes you may see the child looking happy or pretending to be happy but deep within he is suffering these children need to be observed observed means that even though externally he is showing that he is okay deep within him there is sorrow and there is pain and sometimes children does not want to show that parent that they are suffering so they try to hide their sorrows also so many a times parents does not understand that their child is suffering from some emotional imbalance nowadays so nowadays in general um parents does not they do not have that power to observe the child you know just to look at a child and see that let's say their vision hmm, is never is never on you when you were speaking for example if you're speaking to your child and that child does not feel comfortable to look at you while you are speaking to him or her it means that child is suffering with some kind of fear that child has a lot of tension that child is suffering inside and you as a parent not able to understand a child that does not have fear will not hesitate to look at you so there are many things that need to be understood and which need hmm, uh, to be observed in a child for example if you may see your child just sitting by himself or herself for long periods 
understand that child is going through something. That child is having problems. And, that child, and you are not able to understand the problem of that child. So you need to sit with your children and question them and ask them, well, how are you? Hmm? Tell me how was your day today? How was everything in school today? Or what did you learn? Or are you learning? Is it difficult for you to learn? It is very important for parents to spend time with their child or their children. Question your child. No? See, think about their welfare. Understand what they are going through. Understand them also. They have their needs. And if they see a parent is suffering, they will keep their needs to themselves. Because if a, if a child notice or observe that mother is suffering because the father is not there, that child will not tell the, the, that parent or that mother his own problems. Because he will, doesn't want to give more sorrow to the mother. So he will keep his problems to himself. But then he is also suffering. Who is going to help him? And so there is a lot happening like this in society today. And uh, people don't know where to go to seek help. So because there isn't, let us call it, much help around, there's a lot of sorrow, there's a lot of suffering, there's a lot of pain in the society. So understand your child, understand the emotional needs of your child. Well, you give one example of how to um, understand emotional growth or where your child is emotionally if they are not looking at you while you are speaking. That's mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. What are other things to look for, let's say, as your child is developing emotionally? What are mm -hmm. other, let's say, warning signs or good indications? Mm. So one of the signs to understand if your child is progressing or no, when you speak to that child, it would give you, you know, full attention. It would listen to you. A child that listens is a child that grows. And sometimes you see parents talking to the child, and the child gives like a deaf ear. He doesn't listen at all, at all, at all. I hear parents saying, this one don't listen to me at all. You know, how much I speak to him, he doesn't listen. Why it is that child doesn't listen, is not giving importance to what the parent is telling him. Something is wrong with the child. Why is it the child, my child is not listening to me? Something is not right in him. So what is not right in the child? Why is the child not listening to the parent? This is what the parent need to go into and see why the child is not listening. And if, you, if a parent speaks, let's say, harsh to a, a child, when parents speak harsh to a child, the child may or may not listen. If he listens, he is listening under fear. Because he is being spoken to in a harsh way, in a rough way. Harsh and rough means that there is anger in your words. When there is anger in your words towards a child, you are actually putting pressure, you are actually putting tension and fear in the mind of your child. And once you are putting fear and pressure in the minds of your child, understand that a child will not grow. These are the things that block the child from growth. To understand if your child is growing, you would see, this child would, yes, pay attention to when you speak. The child will be happy to do whatever you tell him to do. On the contrary, if a child is constantly being thrown anger to him, he will not grow. He will always be rejecting your words. 
you'll be rejecting whatever you tell him. Which means that there is no love in that process. Parents are not giving love to the children. But a child that is receiving true love and true attention and true care will grow nicely, beautifully, happily. And any child that is growing beautifully will be happy all the time. Will be happy and will be able to give happiness to others. Whereas a child that is not being grown in the right way, but are growing under tension, under anger or under stress, this is what they give to others also. One can only give what they have. And when you see a child, we say misbehaving in society, understand that this child is suffering. Any child that is misbehaving, any child that does not listen, are children that is suffering. Whereas a child that is growing nicely and receiving the love, the care, attention that they need, are what they will also give to others. So these children will turn out to be children who are very kind, who are very generous, who are very helpful, because they are happy. So one way to express happiness is being kind, being loving, being generous, being helpful to others. Happy ones share. The unhappy ones have nothing to share, but on, on the contrary, want to take only. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, we say there are bullies in school today. So these children who we call bullies are children who are suffering. Are children who would come from either a broken home or children who have come from homes where there is a lot of conflicts. Mm -hmm. So you can see growth as well as you can see Underdevelopment. Underdevelopment means that they are not able to use their, their intelligence and their capacity in the way they are supposed to. And when a child is being, or if you, according to your question, the child is growing emotionally, you will see it in their behavior. Their behavior would be a behavior of positive growth. Their behavior would be a, a behavior or nature of good qualities, good values, good virtues. And in that way, his ability will grow. It will develop quickly. So once again, I invite you to spend some time with yourself. Sit in solitude in a quiet place and just reflect and in this reflection ask yourself what am I giving to my children? What am I feeding to my children mentally? and emotionally. Do I speak rough? Do I speak under anger to my children? Understand what is going through the mind of your child each time you speak to that child in anger. Think about that child. And as you reflect on your relationship with your child, understand that each thought, each word, and each act that you perform, your child is looking at you. Your child is learning from you. 
your child has the ability to catch your thoughts, which are the vibrations you send to him. And so if you love your child, you will just create positive, loving, and pure thoughts towards your child. Because this positivity, this pure and loving thoughts are the loving vibrations that will reach your child and help them to grow positively. Understand that every negative thought that I create towards my child is spending, sending negative vibrations, negative energies towards them. And the result is negative. what I feed my child's mind with, so will he grow. From now onwards, I will only be positive with the child. I will only send and create positive thoughts, positive words, and positive actions. As this positive vibrations will help to heal that child that is suffering. Thank you and all. Sampex Limited, networking societies for a better future.